Choosing machine needles can be completely overwhelming. There is a whole array of different styles, different sizes, and it can get really confusing. I'm gonna take you through all the different styles, all the different types, what their uses are for, and which one you should choose for your project. Hi, I'm Emma from Studio 77. And if you have any comments or questions, please do pop them in the comments box below. So before we get started, I just wanna to talk to you about the different numbers that are on each pack. So every kind of needle will have two numbers and a slash in the middle. So they'll have a high number and then they'll have a low number. The high number is the European size and the low number is the American size. For, so for example, on this pack, it says 80 over 12. Now 80 is the European and the 12 is the American. And generally, the higher the number, the stronger or the tougher it, the needle is, the lower the number, the finer and the kind of more delicate fabrics it's for. So an 80 over a 12 is a kind of medium size. We're going to talk about the different kind of anatomy of a needle and you've got different terms for this. So if we take one of our needles, we can see it's rounded at the top. That is the shank of the needle. It's rounded at the front and then the back is the flat part of the shank. And on the front of the needle, you've got this kind of groove that you can put your fingernail in, and that is called the groove. Then you've got the eye, which of course you thread the thread through. And on the back, you've also got what's called the scarf, and that is just above the eye, and it's a kind of indentation. These differ according to the different style of needles. You've also, of course, got the tip or the point. That also differs according to what style of needle you're using. So we're actually going to start off with stretch and ballpoint needles. Now these, as they sound, are both for stretchy fabrics, lycra, spandex, that kind of thing. So the thing about ballpoints and stretch needles is that they both have a rounded tip to the end of the needle. They're not super sharp. What they do is they kind of push the fibres out of the way rather than kind of going gun ho straight through the fabric, they push them out the way so that when the machine is going through any kind of elasticity, rather than bending the fibres, it pushes it out the way so that then the fibres don't get stuck underneath. You can get stretch, ballpoint and jersey. Jersey and ballpoint are pretty much the same. The terms are interchanged. Now, ballpoint needles are for your heavier knits. They aren't quite as good on your lycras and your spandex. Then you've got your stretch needles and these are better for your jerseys, if you're sewing up t-shirts like the one I'm wearing, or if you're sewing up, you know, regular lycra or spandex. The difference between the stretch needles and the ballpoint or the jersey is that the stretch needles have a higher eye. It makes less skip stitches and it means that the fabric is able to, or the seam is able to stretch more before it's, the seam rips. So it's better for those high elastane garments and fabrics. Then we're gonna move on to universal needles. Now, universal needles, like all the different needles, come in an array of sizes. I have quite a few different styles. And I'm just gonna say right now, is that if you are gonna be sewing stretch that we've just talked about, it's always good to have a different supply of needles on hand. Stretch can be a funny old thing, and depending on your machine, depends on how it's gonna to react to the fabric and the needle and the thread. There's so many different combinations. It's a good idea to have a different supply, like I say, because every project's gonna be different. I've had some projects that have been stretchy, and I've used stretch needles and jersey needles, and in the end, a universal needle works. Go figure. I don't know either. Now, as I say, an 80 size is a, a kind of medium size and that will get you through most projects on a universal needle. Normally, if I'm not doing stretch, if I'm just doing cotton, if in doubt, if it isn't broke, I don't fix it. So I do a little test. If it's working fine, I keep the needle. Another rule of thumb as well when you're using machine needles is to change them every four to five hours of sewing. Some people also suggest doing them at the beginning of a new project. And of course, if you're doing lots of big projects, then that's a great test as well. But if you're doing lots of sewing here and there, little bits, five minutes here, five minutes there, which is often what I do, then that's not gonna work, changing a new needle at the beginning of every project. So between four, five, six hours, six hours maximum. 
Now the difference between a universal needle and the other needles is that they're kind of in between a sharp needle and a ballpoint or stretch needle. They have a slightly rounded end, so they're not going to cut through your fabric, but they're not going to be so great on your really high elastic fabrics. So they're a general all-rounder, which is, of course, why they're called universal. <laughs> Moving along, we've got our Microtex or our Sharps needles. Again, huge amount of different sizes, and these are really good because they are have a really acute point, and they're going to not cut through, but they're going to really push through that fabric. And it, according to what size you get, it's great for all different fabrics. As I say, lower number, finer fabric. The other thing that's great about sharp needles or microtex needles is that they're really good for beautiful embroidery, things like that, things where you need a really precise stitch. And microtex as well is also really good for some knits. So like I say, you just sometimes you just gotta try a whole different load of needles until you get the right one for your project. Often you'll be able to just go for it and know that a stretch will sew your jersey, but sometimes you just gotta try these things. Moving on, we're going to go on to the jeans needles. Now, obviously, as the name suggests, these are for jeans, but they're not just for jeans fabric or denim fabric. The reason why these needles are good is that they're super strong. They will go through those fabrics with ease, as long as your machine will go through the fabrics. And then, again, really good one if, you, if you're doing some gun ho sewing and you just need to get through that fabric. The next one we're going to talk about is leather needles. Now, leather needles are in a kind of world of their own. And if you've ever used a leather hand sewing needle, you will know what I'm talking about. But they have a sharp triangular point at the end of the needle, and it's kind of like a blade. It cuts through the fabrics. And if you've sewn with leather or vinyl, that kind of cork fabric, that kind of thing, you'll know that once you've made that hole, there's no going back. And one of the reasons, apart from the fabric, is if you're using a leather needle that actually cuts a hole. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to cut a hole in your jersey or your stretch fabrics because that may pull or knit fabrics is going to pull and it might make a hole. So that's why it's really important to use the right needle for the fabric. The next one we're going to talk about is quilting. And a quilting needle, you could use a universal needle to be fair. I've got them just because they're quite good for going through multiple layers of fabric with ease. And another good one if you are doing a lot of quilting. And the other one that I've got that I didn't even realise existed, but on one project I really needed, and that is the metal fill needles. And these have a kind of coating, I'm not sure exactly what it is, I tried to research about them, but the main thing is, is that they're going to help stop so many breakages on your thread when you're using metallic th threads and fibres through your machine. The other one which is quite a benefit is a twin needle. Now this is great if you're doing jerseys again, stretch, if you want to get that look of a cover stitch machine where you've got that kind of double stitching going along or maybe you want to get a bit fancy on your quilts. I've got a metal fill one, in all honesty, I don't know why, I think I found it in a shop, it was going cheap so I picked it up but I just wanted to show you what a twin needle looked like. And then of course there are a lot of other needles I mean, there's probably like 20, 30 different types, but in all honesty, with most sewing, you're not going to need them. I've gone through my whole sewing life just using these main needles that we're talking about today. So just going back to the main things that you need to remember, the higher the count on the, on the packaging, the thicker the fabric, the denser the fabric, the stronger the fabric. If you're sewing very fine chiffon or lace, something that's delicate, you want to go for a lower number, whether that's a stretch needle, whether that's a universal needle, quilting needle, whatever needle you're using, you go by those numbers. I really hope that's helped you in your needle buying decisions. Sometimes I know it can be a bit overwhelming. Please do click one of these links on the screen right now. At the top, I've got a playlist of all my best beginner sewing tips and tutorials. And at the bottom, there's a tutorial that's been picked just for you. I'll see you on the next video.